For this example, what you should notice is in the first term, there's two things being multiplied together. So because of that, that means that you're going to have to apply a product rule to this first one, and this one will just uh, apply the derivative directly as we've done before in a previous example. So when we do the derivative for this one, this we're going to apply the product rule. So it's the first thing times the derivative of the second plus the second derivative of the first. So let's apply that. I got the first thing, theta squared times derivative of sine. Derivative of sine we know automatically is going to be cosine from the beginning of this section. Plus the second thing, sine theta times derivative of the first. Theta squared, the two comes down, subtract one from the power and you get two theta. So all this, these first two terms, this is going to be the derivative of this part, but we still got to also do the derivative of the second part, so we're going to do minus 3, and then derivative of cosine is negative sine theta, and again that's the definition we talked about beginning of this section. The last thing we're going to do is just do some simplifying on this. Okay, so when we do that, we're going to do, uh, the order doesn't really matter in which you're writing these. But over here, we'll put the two theta first, because usually a single variable will come in front of the uh, trig function. And this will just give us plus three sine theta, and then that's gonna be your final answer. Not, not much more we can do as far as uh, simplifying is concerned there. Okay, for part B, we have some different notation. We, didn't, we don't have the prime notation this time. Instead, you're gonna be doing this. It means the same thing. It means we're taking the derivative of this with respect to Q, so it's same thing as find uh, P primed. We notice that there's a, a fraction that's there, so the fraction, we need to use the quotient rule on it. Now, there is another way that you could do it with product rule. If you take this power and you move it across the equals bar, move it up, and make it Q to negative third, you could apply the product rule there. However, you'll end up with some negative exponents that you have to deal with later. So in this case, I'm just gonna deal with it uh, as is using the quotient rule. Quotient rule formula, so we'll start with dp dq. The way the quotient rule works is you, you're starting with the bottom times the derivative of the top. So I got bottom is q cubed. The derivative of cosine is negative sine that we talked about at the beginning of this section. So we're multiplying it by negative sine q. Don't forget there's a minus sign there, not plus, there's a minus sign in, in the quotient rule formula. Minus the top thing, cosine q, times the derivative of the bottom. The one in the bottom, we can apply a power rule on that. So it's the three comes down, so three q squared you get there. All this is gonna be divided by the bottom squared. So we have q cubed squared. Next, we're gonna do some simplifying on it. So we're done with the quotient rule, so now it's just a matter of using some algebra to simplify it. Negative q cubed sine q, and this is minus 3q squared cosine q. In the bottom, when you raise the power to another power, you're multiplying exponents, so you're gonna get q to the sixth power. The only thing you can do as far as simplifying is concerned is factor out a uh, like term here, and because I see a q down below, I'm gonna factor out a power of q from the top. So if I look at that, the one that I can pull out is gonna be the lowest power, so I'm gonna pull out a Q cubed. Yes, I could factor out a negative if I wanted to, but in this case, I'm only going to factor out the, the Q, so that way I can get something to cancel with the bottom one. So I'm, in this case, uh, Q squared is what I can pull out of each of those. Negative Q sine Q, and then minus 3 cosine will be left over here. So cosine Q, and then all that's going to be divided by Q to the sixth power. The last thing that you can do as far as simplifying here is you can cross cancel these two here, cancel those out. Uh, so if you cancel that out, you have a two there and a six down below, that means that's gonna turn into a fourth power um, because you're subtracting exponents there. On top, you're just gonna be left with what was originally inside the parentheses. And then this part right here would be as far as you can go with your answer. There's nothing more that we can do. You're not allowed to 
cancel any of these out because the cues are inside the trig functions. So that would be as far as you can go. That's your final answer. Okay, for part C, we have another special notation, dr d theta. Taking the derivative of r with respect to theta, we have a fraction, which means we're going to apply the quotient rule on this. So let's start with that, dr d theta. We've got the bottom times the derivative of the top. So we're going to do 1 plus sine theta times the derivative of the top. The derivative of cosine is negative sine theta. There's a minus sign in the quotient rule formula, minus the top thing, cosine theta, derivative of the bottom, which is going to be, if you have 1 plus sine theta, derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of sine theta is cosine theta, and all this is going to be over the, the bottom thing squared, and that's going to be uh, using the quotient rule, this is what we end up with. Next, we're going to do some simplifying because we want to clean this up a little bit if we can. All right, so the first one, we can distribute the negative sine theta into both of those. So we're going to get negative sine theta minus sine squared. So again, I just distributed the negative sine into each of those. We have a negative, and then this one you can turn into cosine squared. The bottom thing, again, I'm not going to foil that out. I'm just going to keep it in that form right there, and that's sufficient. Uh, usually on the bottom, you don't have to worry about expanding it because sometimes you might be able to simplify with something on top. A few problems, uh, you have that result happen. So in this case, I'll just leave it alone. Now, on top, I'm going to see if I can do some factoring. The only factoring step I can do there is I have a negative that I can pull out of all those. So I'm going to pull a negative out, and I get sine theta, and I get plus sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. What you should notice there is an identity. This right here, sine squared plus cosine squared, this part, you should recognize from trig that that's equal to 1. So sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, which means that I can write this as sine theta plus 1, and then I have 1 plus sine theta squared. What I also notice here is now we have a, a term that can cancel out. So again, that's the importance of leaving that in the factored form. We now have sine theta plus 1, 1 plus sine, that's going to cancel. And so here's my final answer, d, dr d theta is going to be uh, if I take one of those out, I have a negative 1 because I still have to have a 1 there as a placekeeper. It'll take out 1 down below, and I get 1 plus sine theta. And then that right there would be your final answer.